Okay, good evening and welcome to the February 26th Palmer Town Council meeting. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Next item is visitors' comments for items not on the agenda. Anyone? Seeing none. Okay, first item on the agenda is discussion and review of the town manager uh, interviews. And Bernie, did you did you have anything you wanted to stay, say before we started? No, no, I don't think uh, both candidates are uh, waiting to hear the response. Uh, but uh, I have nothing, uh, no additional information beyond uh, what we did last week. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll open up to the council for discussion. Who would like to start? Go and I'll jump at once. <laughs> <laughs> I like to kind of listen to everyone else. Somebody's got to go first. Um, I, I guess I can start. I'm not that rational usually. Um, I don't I think either one of them are definitely qualified. Caroline probably has a little more experience <coughs> um, but then I also believe you know, that a little less experience that Brad might have I feel that he has what I'm I don't know the right word in a vested interest you know his heart is from this town which I put as a plus um, and it says you don't always have, you know, so I, okay, so you might have a little more experience, but somewhere down the line, again, like I said, I, I feel he could do the job just as good. Um, but, um, you know, you've got to garner experience somewhere, and I feel that the, his heart is with this town, and to me that, you know, is a big message of, uh, you know, he, left, he went to school here um, and he furthered his career as he spoke, you know, with the intentions of, that was his destination, is to end up back in his hometown and convincing, <coughs> I think part of his saying was uh, convincing friends and stuff that were telling him, oh, no, I'm not, you know, to, to draw people back to the town. So for me, that was a, you know, still in the air as far as who I really put that to me plays a big part in it. And I do believe, you know, he hasn't had the, quite the experience that she's had, but he has been in a big town and he's going to a smaller town. And, you know, I, I think he knows how to access the information that he might not have or, you know, with the help of the council working together with him, I think he'd be a good fit. Thanks, Phil. Carl? Um, uh, a while ago I said a perfect candidate would be an assistant because uh, they're hungry for it, they'll work hard, and, uh, and uh, he's been a sports player, so he's a team player. Um, I know the rest of his family from Munson, and I think I've been to his health, house with one of his uncles before helping his mother with something, and it seemed like a nice family, and I think it could be a good fit. Thank you. Do you I'll be happy to go next. Um, so I think I'll, I'll speak about each of the candidates. Um, Carolyn, I think her her background in in having uh, department head positions in in other communities um, and having you know spent many years in the municipal <coughs> form of government, um, she's definitely has uh, the experience that we need. Um, I think that her coming from a smaller community uh, would be. It, I think she would be a good fit for Palmer um, because 
in smaller communities, you are responsible for wearing a lot of hats, getting hyper involved in the needs of your departments. Um, and I think that is something that we in Palmer need uh, because we are still a smaller community um, and we have limited support staff. So the next town manager really does need to be able to, you know, get involved in in each department pretty thoroughly. Um, I, I think she has some good uh, project management skills with projects that are similar to some of the projects that we need done in, in our community, such as, uh, you know, relocating the DPW in Hadley. You know, that's something that's really important in Palmer right now. Something that she did speak about in her interviews that I thought uh, kind of st stuck with me was that uh, she was all about not stalling projects and keeping them going. And I think that's something that uh, in the next town manager, um, we, we really need because I think as a council, we tend to, well, one, we meet once a month um, and sometimes we really get into the weeds on how things should be done and the way that we want them done. Um, so having a leader who can keep us going um, and not let those projects stall would be just a great fit um, for us. On the flip side, I think Brad, um, he has phenomenal financial management skills, which I think is something crucial for us. Um, he does have that experience in a bigger town, which one of my concerns is that, um, you know, I don't want him to get burnt out by having to kind of scale down um, the, the work that he does as far as resources go um, because even though we might have limited resources we still have a lot of the same problems that a, a bigger town has um, so I just would hope that we would be able to provide him the best support um, I think you know he does as we as we all know he has the ties to the community uh, Carolyn has lived in Wilbraham for a very long time. So I just think geographically we're set up with two candidates who know the area very well. Um, and so having either of these candidates transition into our community, I think will be <coughs> pretty smooth. Um, so I think at this point, I'm still a little conflicted and I'm looking forward to hearing everybody else's opinions um, because I think we have two really strong candidates um, and in either case Palmer will be in good hands. So I kind of took a different approach. I kind of started reaching out to a lot of people that I know in the community and believe it or not, it's pretty tied. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of folks on both sides. Uh, nobody really had anything um negative to say about either person um i guess we did a good job bringing two people to the table here um i do echo a lot of the comments that you just made jessica for both candidates um i think we tried to get as many uh, probing details out of both last week and then in uh prior you know, first round interviews. Um, I'm pretty torn as to far as I think I have a direction I'm leaning. Um, there was no one selling point for either person for me, which kind of sinks because I was hoping it'd be easy. Um, but um, I do feel that, you know, my I, I, I've shared my concerns previous with you know, very close-knit ties to community coming back into it, that's that's kind of, you know, there's a lot of monitoring that will have to happen. You know, we asked Brad a lot of times, like, how would you handle being able to say no? Well, stuff like that. Uh, but on the other <laughs> side, too, we've got Carolyn, who's just been down the street, to your point, uh, just up the street in Hadley. Um, you know, I thought personally she interviewed better the first time. 
uh, compared to this past time, which bothered me a little bit. And I don't know if it's just we just, you know, it was the same, different people asking the same questions and we were just kind of probing. I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, as far as like right now, I don't, I'm, <laughs> I could write either name down on a piece of paper. So looking for, happy to hear the council's, uh, you know, I've got a lot of, like I said, a lot of feedback from the public on both candidates. So. Go ahead, Matt. You want to go first? Okay. <laughs> so I kind of feel the same way as most of the other counselors said. Um, some of the points that stuck with me for both both candidates was, number one, that they're both local. They don't have to go far. Um, another one is that um, individually, Carolyn does come from a community the same as Palmer, right? So she's working in a community about roughly the same size as Palmer, <clears throat> same problems, same everything. So she kind of has an idea of what she would be getting herself into. On the flip side, though, Brad is coming from a community that has three, almost four times as many residents as we do here with a support staff of almost 500, um, which is nothing compared to the town of Palmer, uh, or way more, I should say, than the town of Palmer opposite that. Um, the only concern that I would have is that, that Brad has, um, has had people to do a lot of the stuff that he would have to do here. So that, yes, even though he's had experience and he's got some taste of what he has to do, a lot of the time, though, I feel as though that he's had people in his role as an assistant to do the job for him. Like, yes, he's aware of what's going on because of his position, but does he actually have to do that job? No, he doesn't because he's got people to do it for him. Um, on the other hand, Carolyn works in a community roughly the same size as Palmer, dealing with the same size issues. Um, is in the weeds. You know, she knows what it feels like to work in a small community, wear many hats, like you said. Um, so, yeah, either way, I mean, I'm, I think you did a really good job picking these two. I can definitely say kudos to the, to the search committee because they did a really good job. A um, couple other points that, that stuck with me. I really like Brad's vision. Like, he kept talking about the vision, and, yeah, I was stuck with it at the last meeting when we were doing interviews and I wanted to hear more about his vision. But as we got to talking and things like that, there are a lot of problems in, in not problems, let's just say there's a lot of projects and a lot of things going on in the town of Palmer that where your vision may be set on the back burner for a while because there's a lot of stuff that just needs to get straightened out. Um, and as long as he can, can you know manage his vision and manage the needs of the town at the same time, then I'm all for that. I, I don't have any bad or negative comments for either of them. Um, the other thing, too, for Carolyn is that, you know, she's she's maybe not as strong in finance as Brad is because he's got that finance background. But I think she makes up in personality and in personnel. Like, she has the people skills, I think, to get her to that point where she can groom and actually get the people to help her with the where she's lacking. You know what I mean? She has the personality where she's going to reach out and get help. She's going to reach out for those resources and, and figure out how to fix what she lacks here in Palmer. Um, on the other hand, Brad, same thing almost. Um, very strong in finance. Um, like I said, the only thing is, is that he may have known what was going on, but people were helping him all along the way in such a large community like Plymouth. I'm not saying he didn't do anything, so don't, don't get yeah, yeah, stuck yeah. on that. It's just that he had a large support staff, yeah. so he had a lot of people to help him get it done. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, other than that, I mean, like I said, they're both excellent candidates and it's really hard. And, and even I reached out to people in the community and too, and I didn't hear anything bad. So it's, it's pretty much a toss up between the two of them. <coughs> um, I just want to clarify that Hadley is not the same size as Palmer. It's a lot smaller than Palmer. Oh, people wise? People wise. Commercial wise, they're way a lot more. Yeah. They so they're a little opposite than us. We're a bedroom community. Yeah. And they definitely a have different form of government too. It's select well, so it's administrator, yeah. So it's well, I'm saying it, it's a selectman right. body versus so the, it's the council. Yeah, it's yeah. Correct. Different. yeah, they're both they're both coming from right. town meeting form of government. Right. So it's right. it, it'll be a change of government for them both, and it's you know, and a lot of people look for this type of government because it is much easier to know, you know, your your elected body as your town your legislative body. Um, can be, it has its pluses and minuses, but I would say, argue it's a little bit easier than town meeting. 
This form of government, you can't stack the deck either. There's a lot of, yeah. There's a lot of unknowns in town meeting. So I think that we had two very good candidates and very different candidates. Um, I think they, they both bring different skill sets to the community. Um, I think, um, you know, I, I, liked, I liked both. Um, I think Carolyn brought um, a, demeanor, a demeanor that was very calming. Um, and um, I just, um, I got the impression that she was just someone that was very likable and um, would probably have a very good relationship with um, residents um, as well as businesses. Um, and, um, you know, I agree with pretty much what everyone else said about her. Um, I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of the things that she stated that she was working on um, currently are different projects that we actually have um, or it, are either doing or are in the process of doing here. Um, as far as Brad goes, um, I think that for me, um, you know, the, the takeaways from Brad is that he does have a very strong financial background, which I think is something that, um, which for me, I think is something that we really need. Um, I think that the issues that we're going to be facing or currently facing, um, that financial background is extremely important. And um, I also think that, well, it took a little to get kind of the, the vision actually like um, put into words. I think he does have a vision. I think he has a different, he, he, he's going to come at things or he would come at things differently than probably Carolyn because he did grow up in the community. And I see that um, as a positive. Um, I think that he is aware of um, I would say the the concerns, um, the perceptions of different things, um, whether they're right or wrong. I think he he has that perspective that someone that is not from town would not have. Um, I think it puts us in kind of a unique position that we do have somebody that grew up here and does have roots here. I think that. Um, you know, as far as, um, Matt, to your point, you know, and I, I remember asking this or saying this during the interview of, you know, you have a vision, but that vision might not be something that you can actually start working on until a year or more because there's other things. And he seemed to get that. Um, as far as um, the concerns regarding that he's coming from a bigger community, my feeling is, you know, he probably more than anyone realizes that. I think he is, you know, he's not walking into the situation with his eyes not fully opened as to what we have for staffing here. So I think that, you know, that's a, I assume, a conscious decision that he has made and he's well aware. Um, and I just, I think that um, I'm kind of interested in, you know, his kind of taking his thought and his vision and then how it transcends into actually things happening down the road. So um, I spent a lot, a real lot of time kind of weighing back and forth between the two because I really, I really did um, like Carolyn. I think that she could be a really good fit um, for our town. Um, but I also, I think Phil had stated, you know, anyone when they start a new job, there's always a learning curve and you can't be exposed in any, you know, as we go through our life and our careers, there's always something that we haven't either haven't been exposed to um, or don't fully know all the requirements of. And I think that as long as you know where to go for answers and you know surrounding yourself with the people that 
um, are able to help you when those situations arise. Um, I also think that um, we have a good team of employees here that I look forward to having them being part of a cohesive team. And I think that, I think that both candidates will do that, but I think that that's something that will definitely, um, you know, Brad can rely on those individuals um, so that he's not just carrying the full weight of everything on his shoulders. Um, similar to what Carolyn would have to do if she was chosen. So for me, um, I feel that for what we need right now, um, I think Brad is, um, is, the, is the stronger candidate for Palmer right now. So that's where I'm at. And uh, I just wanted to make another uh, comment that while everybody else was speaking, it came back into my mind was that one of the um, one of our questions to Brad was about how he would handle, um, you know, p potentially knowing a lot of people um, that he's going to work with that, you know, are residents in the community. Um, and what one of his uh, talking points was that he is uh, prides his consistency. And I think that is something that we critically need here right now is a manager who is committed to consistency that will, I you know, think it would build a lot of trust through the council. I think it will build trust, trust amongst uh, the departments. Um, and between financial management skills, some of the very large financial uh, you know, projects that are going to need some financial, uh, some strong financial management skills to support, um, and also you know, build, rebuilding the team at Town Hall um, and, and all of our employees in the town. Um, you know, so between the financial management skills and then also his commitment to being consistent um, and fair are two critical things that I think everyone in the community needs right now. Uh, so I, you know, I think Brad will be able to best provide that for us. I just want to, were you watching me take notes? Because I, I was listening to my, my third eye. I, I, I did write down, you know, <laughs> as, as they were talking, the same thing I wrote down, you know, um, how we spoke about being consistent, consistency, how he talks to different people, he, he adjusts to if he's talking to you or me, and but he's consistent with delivering the same answer, you know, on how he does it. So in that, and then Matt, you made me, and Barb both, you know, made me write something down here. Um, I, I think they both whatever side of the coin that they lack in experience, they both have the ability to reach out and to build upon whatever, I don't want to call it a weakness of just a, a lack of having that uh, ability to do that certain job at that point. And they both, and so to me now, for me, and I am definitely leaning towards Brad, it, I think this is the big thing besides the consistency and stuff is reasons why. Why are you wanting to leave Hadley? And if I'm not mistaken, some of it was the commute for her and the different form of government where Brad's reasoning is it was always a goal was to go get to school and come back. I, I think the, the heart part of it He'd be more, I don't want to use the word vicious, but he's more hungry to come back to his town and show, hey, look, you know, we can do this. Right, it's like, and I grew up here. Let's make it the best of it. Right, and I, I think he has a, a deeper hunger for it. it. The reason is behind why Right. that, to me, weighs heavily. He has a vested interest. Thank you. Yes. See, and he doesn't talk have different to, be, to different people. <laughs> he doesn't have to be caught up on the roads too. If you say it's on whatever Stimson 
Throw it, oh yeah, when I was a kid, I used to throw cans out the window on my way home. <laughs> that arguably I would not uh, I say is like a, to bring a top thing that I'm looking for in a I'm town manager, serious. but okay. And again, I, I've seen him grow, you know, from when he was in town on the, uh, the school. And then, you know, obviously he moved on and he, he's still finishing up further in. And but it, they did do a really good job of making his foot open. <laughs> but I, I do believe that for me, he's the man. He's the person. Oh. Did Did you have anything else, or Mark, Jeffs? Okay. Do you have a motion? Make a motion. To point Brad, or to point Brad, and further your discussions, obviously with um, pay and whatnot. Would, yeah, so you would be looking to offer the posi offer the yes. offer the role, uh, offer the town manager's position to Brad Brothers pending contract negotiations, right? Yes, thank you. Sure. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Okay, so Bernie. Yeah, who was the second? Yes. It was motion by Phil, second by Carl. I need to call. I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so you'll you'll contact um, both Brad and Carolyn. I will do that. I'll do that right away. I know that uh, at least one is in a meeting tonight, but uh, I'll be uh, I'll be in touch with both of them tonight. Okay. Let them know. Uh, and then uh, you'll be uh, meeting in executive session to start talking about the. Uh, Contract. We will, and then um, Bob will reach out to um, Brad tomorrow um, okay. to start. If if we, I mean, I'm assuming that we're going to have Bob do that. I'll know more after we talk about it. But um, right. but yeah, so he so um, he should be hearing from Bob tomorrow at some point. Okay. Okay. I, I, I will uh, I will let him know that, uh, and I'll. Uh, I send on uh, your appreciation to Carolyn for her candidacy. Yes, and, please do. Uh, and uh, all the, the nice things you said about her uh, interview and uh, her qualifications. And, uh, and then if you need anything as you go through the uh, discussions regarding the contract, uh, feel free to reach out and uh, I'll help wherever I can. Okay, thanks, Bernie. Appreciate it. All right. All right. All right. Have a good Bye. night. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bernie. <laughs> Okay. All right, so the next item will be um, executive session, okay? So we will go into executive session under Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Number 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Um, do you have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Motion by Jessica, second by Matt. Um, roll call vote. Matt? Yes. Carl? Yes. Phil? Yes. Jess? Yep. Mark? Yes. And I vote yes. Um, we will be adjourning from um, executive session, so have a good night.